All right, hey everybody. All right, so this review is gonna be kind of different than what you're used to seeing on uh, this channel. I'm actually gonna be doing more of a kind of a discussion. So I'm gonna be kind of talking about a few different topics that I wanted to either get off my chest or talk about or mention. Um, and I don't think that they require a dedicated video, to be honest. So we're gonna get into this. Um, what do we have first on the roster? Um, okay, so I actually ordered some Nighthawks, uh, some AudioQuest Nighthawks, the Carbons, so they're like $700, uh, 750 actually, with the tax that I have in my state. And I'm really excited for them, but I'm also a little bit skeptical. I've heard very good things, but they're such a controversial headphone. There's such a headphone that's like, some people love them, and some people hate them, and... I've heard they have a really polarizing sound. So I'm kind of a little bit fearful of what they're gonna sound like. And also, if I don't like them, if I go to sell them, are they even gonna be able to be sold? Um, you know, it's not like a buying like an HD 600, or I'm sorry, an HD 800, where I know there's a huge market for it and there probably always will be. This is it's a little bit different. Um, so those should be here, today's Tuesday, those should be here on Thursday. And uh, then I'll do like a first impressions, kind of an unboxing, because I hear the unboxing is pretty sweet. And uh, then we'll see where it goes from there. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I'll, I'll be buying the, or I already bought those. I'll be getting those on uh, on Thursday. Another thing that I read about them is that they need a 150 hour burn-in, which is, fucking ridiculous. I mean, why the hell would it need 150 hour burn it? Uh, I'll say it right now. I'm probably going to give it like 20, 40 hours. If there's a significant change that I can notice between that time, then maybe I'll extend it to that 150 hours to do a full review on it. But honestly, I don't, I don't think it should need quite that long. I'm not a specialist, but I do know that audio quest is kind of one of those, uh, controversial, potentially bullshitty companies. Not their own shade or anything. I'm just saying from uh, <laughs> some of the things that I've 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 read about them, um, <clears throat> and then I guess on the same note, I kind of want to talk about why <clears throat> my voice is super fucked up. I've been yelling all day. Sorry. Uh, I did want to talk about why I pulled the trigger on these. Well, I wanted something different, and I've heard that these are a very different sounding pair of headphones. They're not like anything else that's on the market. And that intrigued me. Um, it also intrigued me that a lot of people seem to be interested in it, but nobody seems to be buying it. And I think a big reason for that is, like I said, part of the reason why I'm kind of a little, you know, I was taking a step back from it and considering it more than I normally would is because I don't know what to expect, how these, how these are supposed to sound, I don't know. I, I don't know what the sound signature is really gonna be like because I've heard a couple different things. A lot of people say the bass is really intense. Some people say it's not enough. Uh, some people say it's warm. Some people say there's not enough highs. I know there is a dip if you look at the frequency response, but that doesn't really mean much because I've seen a lot of frequency response graphs for headphones and they are considered bad response graphs, but I find the headphone to be extremely enjoyable. Anyway, so I'll come out with all this stuff and we'll talk about all this and obviously go through it. Uh, I just wanted to mention that it, it should be coming soon. Um, <clears throat> what else have I got here? Uh, oh, um, pads. I was talking about these uh, brain waves up here that uh, I bought um, for these uh, the uh, Audio Technica M40Xs. So I, oh no. So I ended up buying these um, because the stock pads on the M40Xs are horrendous. And I, I bought them before I even got. I bought the pads before I even got the M40Xs because I tried the M50Xs, which I think have the same pads. They look the same. And those were awful. And when I, 
I never did a review because I wasn't really doing review stuff back then. Uh, but I ended up not liking the pads back then. And I kind of made a mental note of how they felt and that I wanted aftermarket pads. But since I wasn't keeping the headphones because I didn't like them, I never ended up taking the dive. Now, then I heard other stuff about those and I was like, all right, well, I'll do it. And so I ended up getting these pads. Now, these are the sheepskin angled memory foam, uh, uh, sheepskin leather ones, and uh, they are really, really comfortable. They're nice and big. They fit completely over your ears. Um, they're very soft and plush. They don't make too much noise moving around in your head, especially if you got a beard like I do. And uh, I just find these very, very enjoyable. I think they're a great addition. They do change the sound signature a little bit because it does move the driver, especially from the stock, compared to the stock pads. Uh, it does move the driver like quite far away from your head comparatively. Um, so sound stage I feel like was increased. Bass maybe a little bit more increased because you're talking about like a larger resonance chamber. Um, but honestly, I haven't really gone back and looked yet because I haven't done the final review where I go through and test everything for hours on end and switch pads and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so these were expensive, but I think they're worth it. And they're kind of more versatile because even if I don't end up keeping those, which I may not, I may sell those, I'm going to keep these and I can put these on another pair of headphones. So if you test a lot of headphones or you go through a lot of headphones, a lot of different ones, maybe pads are a decent option. Uh, what else? Oh, um, I thought about buying, when I was looking at the audio quests, I thought about buying the new HD 660s. Um, is it just the HD 660s or is it 660S or what is it? Hold on one second. Okay, so it's the HD 660S because um, I really enjoy the HD 600 line. I think they're a phenomenal line. Um, I'm sorry, the HD line, the HD line. So I think the 598s are great. I think the 600s are phenomenal. Um, they're probably my number two favorite headphone that I've ever tried. Um, the M50 or uh, M1060 is being the number one favorite. Uh, the 650s were decent. Um, they were very, very close to the 600s, but they had this brightness to the treble that was just really fatiguing to me for whatever reason. Not sure if that was that particular unit or just the stock sound signature of the 650s, but I didn't like them quite as much as the 600s. Um, and then I bought the 800s before. I didn't really like those, back then when I bought them. Now I was more of a base head back then. So now my analysis might be different. I'd be really interested to see if I can get my hands on another pair of those for a reanalysis after I've, I've listened to all these different he headphones. And I was looking at the, the 660s and from everything that I'm reading, they seem to be going more towards the direction that the 650s went away from the 600s. So what I've always wanted out of the 800s back then and even from my remembrance of them now is to be warmer. And from what I'm hearing with these, they're adding clarity, but they're not adding any warmth. And I know you can tube them, but my thinking with amplification is that I think a headphone should be able to sound very, very good no matter what to, or what amplifier you put it on whether it's a solid state, a tube, a hybrid, doesn't matter. It should all sound very good in, in how the sound signature should supposed to be. And of course, your perspective on what the sound signature is supposed to be is, is all personal and up to you. But what I've always wanted, personally, what I have always wanted out of the line was warmth and more bass because I, I don't think that they have enough bass. And that's one of the reasons why these fall short to the, the 1060s over here is because if they did have the bass as well as the vocal isolation that these can do and bringing up that mid range, I, if they did all that and they had a very deep sub bass 
with them in a very rich mid bass, richer than it is already, these would be by far my favorite headphone because I listen to a lot of vocal music and they're able to isolate vocals in a unprecedented way. Even better than the 650s, in my opinion. Um, but anyways, so I was looking at it and all of them seem to th say that it adds clarity, but it goes brighter. And I think that is the wrong direction for what I wanted. And so I decided against, for the time being, against the, the 660 S's. Another thing was, um, they seem to be charging a premium price without it being a premium product. And what I mean is that we all know that the, the 600s are old. They've been around for days, they're tried and true. But from a manufacturing standpoint, I know they don't cost that much, especially anymore to produce. And so the build and the materials that they're using don't seem to be particularly like special in any particular way. Like, <clears throat> the M1060s, for example, like are, are $300, right? They use metal, you know, they use wood, that's real wood in there. Um, the pads are solid and they've got like this huge metal band and they have a, like a really nice cable. And I'm not saying that the, <clears throat> excuse me, the 600s aren't nice, but I am saying that for a $500 pair of headphone, if all you're doing is tweaking and slightly adjusting the driver, compared to $300, which is what those are about approximately at any given time, it's not a fair jump in price. I mean, it's almost twice as much as those for almost no manufacturing change. Now, if this sound is worth it, then great. Then, I mean, that's what it should be about. I think that, that the quality of the headphone, as long as it's not falling apart, shouldn't really pay, play a huge factor, but it does kind of make you feel better to feel like you paid for your money in more than just the sound because for a lot of people, a headphone can be much more than just sound. It can be the experience of the unboxing, the experience of when people pick it up or the feeling on your head. and All those things can come into play with certain individuals. I am one of them. Um, so I feel like the premium price for a not so premium product is kind of a bit of a ripoff. Um, you know, so I'm just kind of talking out of my ass with this one because I, I don't have them here, but this is kind of my thinking as to why I haven't gotten them yet and I probably won't for a while. There's a lot of other headphones I'd rather try. Um, <clears throat> and then a, a, a person commented, let's see if I can find the comment, that basically uh, asking if I could test on other amps. And I told uh, said person that I don't know if they want to be named or not, so I'm not going to name them. That uh, there's two reasons why I don't have a lot of other amps. One of them, <clears throat> excuse me, is money. Um, amps are expensive, and I, at this point in my channel, like I'm not making any money on these videos at all. Everything that I buy is completely out of pocket. The ad revenue has not even kicked in yet. I technically do not have ads or monetization on my channel because it's still in review because I just passed 10,000 views um, like a week ago and now I'm up to uh, 13,400 but it still hasn't been approved. Um, e either way, uh, everything is coming out of pocket. So because it's coming out of pocket, I feel like in, regarding being an audiophile, I feel like headphones make the biggest difference. So you take a hundred dollar, fuck that. You take a thirty dollar pair of headphones and a thousand dollar amp. It is not going to sound nearly as good as a thousand dollar pair of headphones with a thirty dollar amp. You can disagree with me. That's just my opinion. That's my experience. So regarding things that make the biggest difference and things that I can recommend the most, and they're easiest for me to get my hands on, easiest for me to tell, and what people are going to help build or the the videos that are gonna get the most views to help build this channel so I can do more of this, headphones are the way to go, not amplification. That and something that I said to the, this person was that I felt that a good headphone should sound good on practically anything. And a good amp should help any just about any headphone sound good. 
But when it comes down to the comparison between the two, in my opinion, headphones are more important and take precedence over an amplifier. So that's the reason. Now, like I said, disagree with me, don't disagree with me. Leave me in the comments how much you hate me and how much you disagree with me, that, that's fine. Uh, but that is my thinking. Um, so that was just a few things that uh, I kind of wanted to to go over. Um, I guess some last minute things. I'm gonna be changing the description in all of my videos to include all of the reviews of every other video I've done, as well as I'm gonna add a Patreon link because um, I think it's a good in-between level for when you're starting a channel and people can help you especially when you're reviewing things, so you have to have them. So it's a good in between when you are paying for everything yourself and when companies send you things to review. And it'll help bridge the gap, so the more money that I get on that, the more money, I, or I'm sorry, the more money I can put towards headphones and amplifiers and things like that. And then from there, I can build my audience and the existing audience, thank you for being there by the way, and uh, kinda, you know, to help kickstart this. So if there's anything else in the comments, or I'm sorry, in the description that you would like to see in the description section, please leave them in the comments down below. I'm definitely open to ideas. Um, right now, I think the format, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be something along the lines of an Amazon link to whatever the product I'm talking about on top, then Patreon, and then, um, all the other reviews listed alphabetically by brand and then by type of headphone. And then below that, uh, amplifiers and other miscellaneous review, or maybe not reviews, but videos. And then uh, below that, a list of the songs that I use to test said uh, items. Um, and then I, th I think that'll be it. Anyways, I guess that's it for this. I think I'm gonna call this uh, headphone discussions, maybe. I don't know, let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Uh, I love having a conversation with you guys, so please leave me some comments and uh, definitely recommend the channel to anybody. I'm trying to grow this thing and it seems to be growing pretty fast, so I'm hoping to keep up the momentum, keep things going, keep things building. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Josh, this has been One Man's Guide, and uh, have a good night for me, day for you, I don't know. <laughs>